Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how to make an LOL diagram with working in it. Um, and if we have time, probably will, because this is a recording. Uh, we'll do some maths that go along with these types of problems. Alright, so in this problem, uh, let's take a look. A roller coaster is being pulled up to the top of the first hill by a motor. The roller coaster, including its passengers, has a mass of 1,000 kilograms. Initially, the roller coaster is 20 meters off the ground. At the final condition, when the roller coaster is at the top of the hill, the roller coaster is 80 meters off the ground. In both cases, uh, the initial and final conditions, the roller coaster is moving at a speed of 1 meter per second. Alright, so let's just go over that and figure out what's probably important. Okay, so first... Alright, so first off, we know the roller coaster is being pulled up to the top of the first hill by a motor. Okay, and we've also got a mass for the roller coaster, it's a thousand kilograms, and that the roller coaster is initially 20 meters off the ground. And we also know that in the final case, the roller coaster is 80 meters off the ground. Um, in both the initial and final conditions, the roller coaster is moving at a speed of one meter per second. Okay, so first we've got to draw an LOL diagram for the condition, before and after. So I'm going to go with drawing the system first. So first off, let's do, um, let's go over these things. We've got uh, EG, ask yourselves, okay. Over the course of the problem, is there any energy stored gravitationally? Okay, well, we know that it changes in height, so uh, we are probably interested in the EG columns, so we'll write down the Earth. Now, is there any EK initially? Yes, we know that there is EK initially, and finally, how? Because it's moving with a speed of one meter per second before and after. So we've got the roller coaster. And is there any ES? Ask yourself, is there any energy stored in a spring when it is stretched or compressed? And it turns out there is no spring in this problem. Okay, so we've got no ES before and we've got no ES after. Now, directing our attention here to the E internal, the problem did not say anything about friction, so you know what? I'm going to not include it in our problem. All right, so we know how energy is stored before and after uh, the car is pulled to the top of the first hill. Let's take a look at what happens initially. First off, are we gonna put some EG in the initial bar graph? Well, the fact that it's at 20 meters off the ground initially tells us we probably should. So I'm going to put one block in the EG column. Now these are not going to be to scale. It's just to give us an idea of what's present and not in terms of how energy is stored. Um, ini so initially, do we have any EK? Yep. We know that initially we've got a speed of 1 meter per second and that we've also got speed of one meter per second in the final case too. So I'm going to put one block in the EK initially and then I'll put one block in the EK in the final condition too. So we're almost there. Um, let's talk about the EG column in the final condition. Well we know that thanks to the motor we've got the roller coaster uh, now at a height of 80 meters off the ground. So what I'm going to do is add four blocks to the EG column. Okay, so we're almost done. Now, we'll notice that the EG has increased before uh, to the after because we know that the height is now higher. So we would expect more EG in the final condition. 
okay? So we did nothing wrong here, but the problem is, is that we've got a total of two blocks in the initial bar graph, and we've got a total of one, two, three, four, five blocks in the final case. So the question is, where did the energy come from? Well, it turns out that there is an external object applying a force to something in our system. Okay? And by an external object, I'm talking about this motor here. So, how do we account for that in an LOL diagram? Well, all we have to do is note that we have three more blocks in the final case than the initial, and we'll do some working on the system. So that will go here. And we've got one, two, three blocks going in by working. And it's a positive, so it goes in. Working on car by motor. Okay, so there we have a complete LOL diagram. All right, so now it looks like we're ready to take on the second part. We now have to figure out the working done by the motor. Okay, no problem. All we have to do is figure out what's going on with this working arrow here. What value of joules do we have for working? Okay, well, one mistake that I see a lot of students do is that you are immediately compelled to go to our working equation where working is equal to the external force times displacement. Sorry, that's kind of messy. But not necessary in this case. Don't have to deal with it. Uh, we've got a few reasons why we can't do that. We don't know what the external force is. We also don't know how far the roller coaster was pulled. So that's two times uh, bad for us. Now, the good thing is, is that we have an LOL diagram and we could figure out how much these three blocks are worth. Okay, so let's go about doing that. Uh, ask yourself, can we figure out the EK? Sure. Uh, we've got enough information for that because we've got one meters per second and we also have a mass for the roller coaster. So in our calculator, we're going to plug in for our EK equation, we've got EK is equal to one half mv squared. Okay, so let's plug that in and we should get 500 joules. Alright, so we've got 500 joules here. 500 joules here. Sorry, kind of messy, still getting used to this. Uh, next thing, let's try to figure out how much EG we have before and after. To do that, I'm going to use my E sub G equation, which is EG is equal to mass times 9.8 newtons per kilogram times the height, and I'm going to do that two times, one for before and one for after. All right, so grab your calculator, come check my work. All right, in the initial case, I've got a big number here. I've got 196,000 joules, and in the final case, I've got an even larger number, as expected, 784,000 joules. Okay. Alright, so uh, to find how much this working is, this working that we're so obsessed with now, is just a matter of figuring out how much more uh, energy is there stored in the final case than there was in the initial because if we know uh, the increase in energy between the initial and final case, we know what the working is.
okay? And as you can probably tell, we don't even need to deal with these 500 jewels here and there because they kind of cancel out. We are not so interested in the EK column because it stayed the same before and after. What we are interested in is the change in the EG in this case. Not every problem is going to be this way, but uh, it is so in this problem. Okay, so essentially I want to figure out how much are these three extra blocks in the EG column in the final case. Okay, so all that is is a matter of subtracting the 784,000 from this 196,000, or rather the other way around. So let's do that. And I have that working is equal to 588,000 joules. Okay, so there we have it. Thus far we've done A and B. Okay, uh, for the next part of the problem, part C, going after the power output of the motor. Okay, let's go on to the next page. So in the next uh, part, we want to find the power. We already know the working. We found that out to be 588,000 joules. And by the way, remember, we did not have to use the working is equal to the external force times x equation. You do not always have to go to that equation, OK? All you have to do is, in most cases is refer to your LOL diagram and reason it out. Compare the energy before and after. Okay, so we know that the power is equal to um, working over time. And I believe I wrote this problem so that we did this in, or not we, the motor did this in 30 seconds. So all we do is simply take our 588,000 joules and divide it by 30 seconds. And I get 19,600 joules per second or 19,600 watts. Done. And there is your LOL diagram uh, with numbers, and even a power part of this problem. Hope this helps.